she's not here because she's at 33 Orchard with a show of an artist that she represents and shows in this gallery, Joyce Robbins. And so because I'm here, I thought it'd be fun to talk about Joyce Robbins' work. And we actually, they has a piece, like we have an actual artwork here. <laughs> but you're gonna handle it, right, Ben? Because I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm because, <sorry. laughs> because these are ceramic pieces. Uh, yeah, you get really nervous. Like, oh. And they're actually, they're actually like, no, you're, yeah. you're gonna be like bad. <laughs> They're actually. You want me to handle it? I've only got to say the trouble. Where is the trouble? Okay, this is it. Yeah, they're wall based piece, ceramic pieces. Um, and, okay, yeah, here it is. Okay, I'm not going to hold it the whole time. I will leave it here. <clears throat> but, hi, Stephanie. Um, so we have um, an image of a similar piece. Uh, it's not this exact piece that we have here, but this is a Joyce Robbins um, piece that I saw uh, a few years ago at a huge exhibition. Maybe some of you were there. It's an it was an exhibition curated by Fong Mui called Surviving Sandy, um, and it was in Sunset Park, and it had 300 artists or something about 300 artists, maybe more. Um, and so I looked at this show, I was under a lot of like, pressure because I had brought my children who um, hate art um, to this exhibition, so I was kind of like rushed and stressed, but I managed to get through this show and there were a couple of pieces that just resonated with me and that I wanted to like look at more, look into the artists. Um, as Ben was mentioning, I did this column in Hyperallergic where I interviewed contemporary painters. So, I took note of a couple of pieces. Um, one was by Mark Greenwald, the painter, and I ended up interviewing him after that. And the other one was this piece by Joyce Robbins. And I was so taken with this piece, like that I had, I took a photograph on my iPhone and I just kept it in my iPhone photos and sort of carried it, carried this image around with me for like a couple of years, I think. So, and it was just interesting to me that this small piece, it was, I guess about this size, um, was out of all of these like 300 artists, like the thing that I was carrying around with me. And I had to kind of think about that, like just that something so simple, so s small was the thing that was really, I wanted to keep looking at. And um, I didn't really know Joyce um, or her work so much before that. So I did a little bit of like research into her, who she was, um, and then there were some occasions, like social occasions, when I would see her and I would be like the like fan, and she had no idea who I was. But. <laughs> so um, anyway, like I said, I kind of carried it around, um, and I thought about that idea of like why something does like resonate with you, especially when it's you know abstract like this. I mean, we've just heard about. Mondrian, so similar, but like why something so seemingly like simple would resonate um, with you. And I think uh, I'm asking this, I'm saying this, or asking it um, rhetorically, because I don't really know if I have an answer for it, but I think it has something to do with seeing in it um, a vision or an emotional expression that's similar to maybe how, to how you see the world or perceive um, things or experiences in there. So um, then maybe like a year or so later, I was at um, one of the satellite art fairs that's, that happens on the pier around Armory Week in New York. And again, it was kind of this similar experience of like being in this vast kind of industrial like establishment kind of setting and um, seeing something that was really personal or intimate, and that was a, a booth that was organized by the art dealer and gallerist John Lee of Thomas Muskowski's paintings. And um, Tom Muskowski and Joyce are a couple, they're married. Um, and I forgot to say, actually, that within the um, Surviving Sandy exhibition, the installation of this piece and other pieces by Joyce, it was, um, Bond had done a couple of couple installations. So, 
Tom and Joyce's work was installed together in this, in this big show. And then across from the installation of their work was um, an installation of another artist couple, um, Bill Jensen and Margaret Nuchek. So I think that also probably was interesting or appealing to me, like seeing within this huge exhibition uh, a kind of like taste of an intimate relationship, like an artistic and personal um, partnership within this vast show. So anyway, I saw um, Tom Ruskowski's work um, in this big setting, you know, kind of very commercial setting, but John Lee had um, picked paintings of Tom's from all different periods, and he, we started talking a little bit, and he took one off the wall for me and showed me the back of it, and on the back was like a wall label from, um, I forget what gallery, but a gallery like that he had worked for many, many years before. And it was like his first gallery job. And he said, like, I put this label on the back of this Tom Skowski painting. And like, I've been working with and friends with Tom for all these years. So it was a similar kind of experience of seeing like some kind of intimate or personal relationship within this larger um, like commercial setting. So anyway, I decided at that point that I wanted to do an interview with both of them because I was like equally fan of both of their work and I didn't want to kind of decide like who to interview, whether it was like Tom or Joyce. So I concocted this idea and I think I said it to John at the time um, or maybe like a little bit later that I want to do an interview with the two of them, like a couple interview. And I didn't really know like how they would react and I hadn't done any couple interviews before for the column, but um, they didn't like blink, they were totally into it. And, um, so I was able to do like the first you know, couple interview for, for the column Bureau of the Painter, and I went up to visit them. Um, they live in upstate New York and uh, talked to them, and, and it was again like a really interesting experience of seeing kind of the relationship or like that intimate, like personal and aesthetic relationship, and they freely kind of acknowledge how the other has like infiltrated their work and how they've kind of taken things from each other. Um, and in fact, so you see here that Joyce works with ceramics, and one of the things that they joke about is how they switched places, like um, Tom started as a sculptor and then became a painter, whereas Joyce started as a painter and then became a sculptor, and they kind of joke about it like, well, we were just like stealing each other's materials, basically, and it was like, that's kind of how it happened. Um, so Joyce's work, um, again, like the question is kind of like, why, you know, why does it like resonate with me? Um, she talks about how she is, she grew up on the beach, she grew up in Rockaway, and um, how the beach and like that experience of living near the beach and seeing all of these objects affected by weather and time and water and wind is really um, how she thinks about her work. So her work has all of these um, concavities that you can see here. Um, and sometimes it also has piercings that are basically, um, she describes them as like the light and the wind and the air kind of moving through surfaces. She started um, working with ceramics um, kind of like by chance, she had a job teaching ceramics and she was doing painting at the time and she realized she could kind of like untether the elements that are in her paintings and actually, you know, free them from kind of the painting rectangle and construct them. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and the other thing is that just that um, kind of medium of, um, I call it physical painting. I ended up curating a show that was called Physical Painting and Joyce's work it was in the exhibition. It was at Purchase College um, last year. And um, I think that's also something that I find interesting in her work, how it kind of lands between painting and object and is, is you know, in between or neither one. She, um, I thought of it while I was handling this because when uh, I was organizing that exhibition, she said, well, I'm gonna come to install the work 
she said, Art, do you really want to be the one who puts a nail through the ceramic? And I was like, no, yes, please come and do that for us. That would be great. But um, yeah, her work kind of lands between painting and objects, and she really teaches, uh, are we out of time? Okay, all right. Um, she she um, kind of treats ceramics like a painter. I just wanted to read to you like, how she writes about, or how she speaks about making this work. Um, she says, I use glazes as I would paint directly into specific areas, and after they are fired, I go back with acrylic ink and watercolor and paint both the glazed and unglazed areas. Um, and some of the glazes function as a resist. Um, so she works and reworks the surfaces, washes it off, scrubs it, and keeps layering the color until she gets what she needs. Um, that's how she talks about it. And I think that the other thing that relates to my first idea about like how it resonates or touches me um, is that she says she tries to use an experience of the world, like visual memories, to inform her work. Um, she says it's never direct, it's always an oblique reference, like we were just talking about the um, experience of the, the beach. And she says she's always surprised after completing a sculpture to see that it resembles something of the world. And she counts it as a success when that occurs because it reinforces an engagement with the environment. Um, the other thing is that there's a kind of like irregular regularity to her work um, in all of it. Like there's some kind of reference to like patterning or the grid, as you can see here. But then there's also an irregularity that happens within that, and I think I find that very uh, like interesting or appealing. Um, and just finally to say, um, the other thing that I really can relate to, or I think that's very important to think about, is that she says she's trying to create an abstraction that was really about a representation of an experience. Trying to create an abstraction that's really about a representation of an experience, and she says, which I would say most abstraction is. Thank you.